evening, brothers and sisters, grace and peace to all the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yahusha Hamashiach, all glory to the Most High Yah. Praise His holy name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I uh, just wanted to go ahead and go over some scripture today from Philippians. This is a verse from my Bible study that I wanted to share with you guys to help encourage and build up brothers and sisters that are in Christ that are going through these day-to-day -day trials, tribulations, whatever you're going through, whatever you're facing. Uh, we are not alone. All of us that are in Christ, that are born again through Christ by the Spirit of Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit, uh, we are here and we want to endure and we want to encourage you, brothers and sisters. I want to encourage all of you guys. Um, my brothers are men of majesty and fit to fight for Christ too. Um, I'm praying for you guys, praying for strength, encouragement in these uh, trials and tribulations and things that we're going through right now, different dynamics of warfare that many are facing right now. My prayers are with you guys and your support is with you as well. My support is with you guys, seriously, man, because, you know, uh, it's, it's coming all, it's coming in all angles. You know, this wickedness, this, uh, all these different things are happening. The devil knows his time is short. His agents are working very, very hard to try to take as many people out from receiving the gospel. But it's our job through, tr through trial and tribulation, no matter how hard it is through persecution, we are here to live the gospel, live according to Jesus Christ's commands, and to preach the word of God regardless of whatever that we are faced. We are like uh, soldiers, Marines in a war here, spiritual soldiers. Hallelujah. So I want to go over here and go through Philippians 2, 12, and I'm going to go all the way to 18. This is the Apostle Paul. You know, in this letter, he was addressing um, the church in Philippi, um, Asia Minor. He was uh, pretty much encouraging the brothers and sisters there that he thanked them for the support and to encourage them to continue to preach the gospel, even though he was in prison. Um, you know, he was just letting them know that they're going to be having facing persecution trials and throughout all the adversity, continue to continue, continue to preach and live the gospel as well. And it was another man that was a, I believe he was a missionary. I forget his name, Ep Epidopreus or something like that. His name was, and he was letting them know that, you know, he was recovering from his illness as well. But this is the verse uh, 12. We're going to go all the way to 18. And this is Paul stating uh, exercise humility it says, therefore, my beloved, as you always obey so now, not only as in my presence, but much more in absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is Yah who works in you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Do all things without grumbling or questioning that you may be blameless and innocent children of Yah without blemish in the midst of a crooked and twisted generation among whom you shine as lights in the world holding fast to the word of life so that in the day of Christ I may be proud that I did not run in vain or labor in vain even if I am to be poured out as a drink offering which he was already you know foreseeing his his um his you know he was going to be killed for the gospel he knew that was going to happen uh, the sacrificial offering of your faith I'm glad and rejoice with you all he he already knew that he was he was going to get taken out, but he was he was encouraging the brothers and sisters to continue to endure and, and continue to, to work together, not complaining, not, you know, getting um, frustrated and things like that. Stay faithful, stay committed to the mission that Jesus Christ um, commanded all of us to do. And he didn't want to guys, the, 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 the people there, he didn't want them to feel, you know, that they were uh, left alone. He wanted to encourage them. Um, and then I want to read in 18 says, likewise, you should be glad and rejoice with me. I'm going to go ahead and go on the second part of this real quick, because this is going to talk about that. The brother at Pro Pro Proditus in um, the examples of Timothy as well it says, I hope in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you so that I so that I, too, may be cheered by news of you. For I have no one like him who will be genuinely concerned for your welfare uh, 
for they all seek in their own interests in those of Jesus Christ. But you know, Timothy's proven worth how as a son with the father, he has served with me in the gospel. And I hope therefore to send him at just as soon as I see how it will go with me. And I trust in the Lord that shortly I myself will come also. And I have thought of necessary to send you um, Epaproditus, Epaproditus, my brother and fellow worker, fellow soldier, and a messenger, a minister of my need, for he has been longing for you, and all has been distressed, because you heard that he was ill, and indeed he was ill, and near to death, but God had mercy on him, and not only him, but also me, lest I should have sorrow up upon sorrow. I am the more eager to send him there for it that you may rejoice in seeing him again, and then I may be less anxious. So receive him in the Lord with all joy, honor, such men, for nearly died for the work of Christ, wishing their life to complete what was lacking in your service to me. And then upon the other um, chapter 3 goes on to talk about uh, prize of Christian life and the knowledge of Christ and warning against um Judaizers, uh, Judaizers there. So, in a roundabout, it's warm in here too. Whew. So, I just wanted to just cover what I went over here. So, uh, Paul wanted us to, wanted the people in Philippi uh, in Asia Minor to exercise in humility. That's what we do too. We exercise in humility. But at the same time, don't be afraid to stand firm for the truth. Because, listen, the enemy is going bold for all wickedness that's out there, right? We as believers in Christ must stand firm and go hard for Christ, too. We're not trying to bogart or trying to make people feel like like um, we're more dominant because we're not working from the flesh. We are doing this by the power of the Holy Spirit that we do this work and we carry this work. And it's not on a pride of a, of a human pride, but it's because we want to serve the most high. And that's what I do, too. So that's my heart that's what i that's what i want to put forward okay i'm uh, being the salt and light i have to stand firm in christ over what my friends feelings are or what my my own personal feelings are even if it it goes against what i wish i have to make sure i have to stand firm because i cannot allow myself to be taken by what the world determines is what we should do rather than listening to the most high Yah and allowing his voice to be uh, put forward and his word to be put forward because his word becomes is it, it's it's how do you say it his word is first before any man any person I don't care what your opinion is. I don't care what you think. I don't care what you feel. I don't care how your emotions pulling you. You feeling sorry for, for, for people and stuff like that. Listen, the most high word is above all. All the prophets of old, when people were saying, why are you doing this? Why is God making you do all these things? When 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 the most high had to, uh, was telling, uh, what's his name, Abraham to sacrifice his son, right, Isaac? And the wife didn't really, but she she understood what had to be done. You know what I mean? That people didn't want, they, they didn't really want to do that, but he had to do it. They had to obey. And that's what most of the prophets have to do. All the prophets, Jeremiah, Isaiah, Ezekiel, Elijah, all of them, every one of them, Moses, Abraham, all the prophets had to obey, you know. And regardless of what the people thought, they had to carry out the mission, Samuel. You know, he had to carry out the mission. All the prophets have to carry out the mission. Um, Nathan, you know, all of them, you, you know, you can't avoid that. You know, that's when you're when you are called to serve the most high, you have to do his will and your feelings have to be thrown in the trash. And that's just the basic truth. And I'm sorry. I mean, I'm not sorry, but I'm, I mean, if that hurts your feelings, then you can't get mad at me. You have to get mad at the most high. You have to take that up with him. Get in prayer because, listen, we as brothers and sisters, we know the time is short. We know we don't have a lot of time left. We have to have a desperate and be intentional on how we reach the people and how we lead people to Christ. We have to show love, but we got to remember the Most High, Yah, Jesus Christ, Yahushua HaMashiach is holy. And he wants us to be set apart from the ways of this world. I don't care if your feelings get hurt with this. 
or if you don't know, understand how it is, but you have to study. You have to ask the Lord to give you the Holy Spirit so you can be revealed to you so that you can understand why we must be firm in our stance. You cannot let the ways of the world infiltrate your mind and dictate how you walk for Christ because that don't work like that. That's living in the flesh. You got to live through the spirit. Don't live through your emotions. Let the Holy Spirit be your God and guide you to all truth, righteousness and understanding. Not righteousness through me, not righteousness through ourselves, but righteousness through the word of God, through his power of his Holy Spirit. So that's my word for you guys. Stay encouraged, stay strong, stay in love, but stand firm, be set apart, be holy for the, for the most high is holy. I love you guys. You guys have a great weekend and a great night. Peace.